Hey, this is Victor Antonio, and welcome to Let's Talk Sales, a place where we're just going to have a conversation about sales, you know, with all the hype, with all the fluff, no hyperbole, just lets you and I talk. Today's topic, I thought would be interesting to discuss something. I, I get this question a lot, and that is, you know, what do you think of scripts, Victor? Scripts. What do you think of them? Good, bad, indifferent, you know, where do you stand on that? And so, you know, my my opinions of scripts have evolved over time, but I'll also say that it's also context-based when they ask that question. In other words, what's the context for using a script? And when should you use a script? And the story I like to tell is the day I discovered that using a script the right way can make you a more effective salesperson and presenter. And so I'll give you the short version of the story. A company calls me up and says, hey, we're looking for trainers and we love the way you train. And they were selling a software product, and they were looking for a trainer to actually demonstrate the software package, do a full-day workshop, right? Show PowerPoints, demonstrate the software. So I had to learn the software, learn the PowerPoint slides, and actually they gave me a script, like a little manual that thick, with the actual scripts in there, things I had to say. Now, what's interesting about this company is that they recorded all the events, right? So they had, I was trainer number seven. They had six trainers already. They were looking for a seventh trainer because the company was growing. And so I agreed to do it. And I remember going, oh, scripts, hate scripts. Don't like using scripts. You know, I always like to kind of go in there and wing it, so to speak. But I had to use a script. And what they would then do is at the end of the day, that audio recording was actually sent to the uh, corporate office and they would actually sample a few of them. And, you know, in, in terms of they would play the audio and they would, they would sample like, okay, here's what he should be saying. Is he saying it via the script? And what was interesting is that it, it was the most scientific approach I've heard to script, you know, based you know, talking and tracking at the same time. In other words, they were actually, they could actually correlate it's important. They can actually correlate. You know, when somebody was using the script that they had developed for like six, seven years, no exaggeration, that this script had been polished for six, seven years, they found a correlation. And that is when people stuck to the script or close to it, I'm talking about 98% close to it, their sales would actually go up. Because while I was doing those presentations for that software package, at the end of the day, people made decisions whether they wanted to buy or not buy. And there was a strong correlation that if you stuck to the script, you have a higher close rate. And when I got to the point where I started really using the script, I actually you know, increased in terms of sales. So that's when it finally hit me like, okay, maybe this does work. Now, what's interesting is that I started using the script. My sales started going up. But you know how uh, like when you become good at something, you get a little cocky. You, get, you start feeling yourself a little bit, if you know what I mean. And all of a sudden, I started deviating from the script. And sure enough, you can actually see my sales fall. At first, I was confused. I said, why are my sales going down? My ability to close from the front of the room going down. And you know, they said, well, let's go look at the script. Let's go listen to the audio. And sure enough, little by little, I had veered off gently off script. And then this was a big aha moment for me because I thought it was about, you know, when you look at a script, you're like, yeah, yeah, script. But it's mostly about, I said, personality, infusing it with your character and your stories. And that does help. But at the end of the day, what I realized with this company is that what you say, how you say it, but more importantly, when you say it, really does matter. What you say how you say it, when you say it, really makes a big difference in terms of whether or not you'll be successful when it comes to presenting. And so what was interesting is that I had to go back and reread the script and basically reprogram myself to stick to the script. And that was a valuable lesson for me. And the reason I want to have this conversation with you, because when they ask me the question, I'm like, well, it depends. If you're working for a company where you have to be compliant, in other words, certain things have to be said if you want to maintain, you know, stay within compliance, in other words, you don't want to get in legal trouble, then certain things have to be said and you have to stick to a script. But I also realize that when people have spent, in this case, this company has spent six, seven years developing a script, maybe there's something to it because they were successful in building a script that was very effective. They knew what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. So what I want to say to you is, you know, how well do you know what you're going to say? 
and how you're going to say it, or when should you say it. When we first begin to sell a product, we stumble a little bit, right? We kind of like, you know, uh, it's very hard sometimes to have a conversation because we're trying to think of everything we need to say. But over time, we begin to develop our own personality on script. We kind of figure it out, right? We kind of figure it out over time. The problem with that approach is that you practice on your customers, which you should never do. In other words, you know, the time to practice is not in front of your customers. The time to practice is when you're home alone or in your office building your script. And so here's what I'm going to suggest. And I do this now for my speeches. It's hard for me to do word for word scripting. Okay. So I have to full confession, you know, full disclosure. But I've learned to frame or structure outline what I want to say what you know when i want to say it and how i want to deliver it and so what i do is when i know that i'm going to present to somebody or i'm going to do some type of presentation i actually structure out what i want to say so in other words i'll say you know what i'm going to start out with the opening here i'm going to talk about this topic first then this topic i'll transition this topic i'll show this data point so forth and so on and then I build the words around that. So that's where I let the natural part of my enthusiasm or my my own original voice come through. Because at the other extreme of using scripts, you know, is no script at all, right? Just kind of, yeah, just wing it. Well, that's not a good plan. But if you go too far right or left, depending on your perspective, and you just use a script and you have no personality, well, that's not going to work either. So the toughest part for you and I is always to find that that balance, Right. Because you got to hit points. You got to say certain things. You got to say them a certain way and you got to say them at a certain time. But then how do you infuse your personality so that it sounds natural and not mechanical? See, that's the challenge when we, we build scripts. And so what, what I want you to start thinking about, how do you structure your presentation? Do you just put the PowerPoints together? And if you do, when you practice the PowerPoint presentation slides, do you structure what you're going to say? Because this is important, how you structure your slides, how you structure what you're going to say within that slide really does make a difference. And what I've learned is that you've got to practice it over and over again where it becomes so automatic. There's that joke that says, basically, if I wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning, if I wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning, could you do your pitch? Could you tell me about your product? Could you tell me about the feature, benefit, advantage, gain? Can you tell me about the underlying issues customers have? Can you really talk to that? And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then that'll come out in how you speak to a customer. You ever ask somebody a question? This is always fascinating. You ever ask somebody a question, a tough question, right? Somebody's trying to sell you something. You ask them a tough question. And let's say, for example, hey, does this thing do that? They go, yeah. And you hear that little, yeah, that little hesitation, that little micro hesitation. You hear it, and at a subconscious level, it registers with you that maybe this person doesn't know what they're talking about. You know, in other words, that person loses a little bit of credibility. See, that's what happens when you don't know your content, when you don't know your material, when you don't know your products and you don't know your services, what you're really offering. When customers hear these small hesitations, guess what? Mentally, they'll pull back. And that's why not only is knowing a script enough, being able to deliver it with confidence, being able to answer questions, because Part of the scripts we never practice are the tough questions. A lot of us know what products, you know, here's a product, here is our service. We know what to say. In fact, we know when to say it and how to say it, right? We can do that. But when somebody asks you a question, all of a sudden, you, you, that has, that, yeah, I think we can do that. Yeah, I'm sure we can. And you see the, the facial expressions, right? And you hear that tone, that lack of confidence in the tone immediately, right there and then. At that moment, you've lost the sale. You've lost that person. So one of the things I recommend is that one thing, it's one thing to practice your product script or your service, whatever you're selling. But another thing we have to practice is what happens when somebody asks a, a, ask a, a tough question? When we get asked a tough question, how do we respond? Have we scripted that out? Have you written that out? Because one of the things I learned very quickly is that when somebody asks me a tough question, I know what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. In other words, I know that if somebody asks me a tough question and I kind of know what they're looking for, I usually take one of two approaches. One is I already know the answer and I give them a nice complete answer so they'll feel comfortable. And at the end of the question, I go, did that answer your question? And I wait for them to say yes. 
And again, if they kind of hesitate, yeah, you kind of did, Victor. I said, well, kind is not good enough. Can you restate your question again or what's not clear and let me try again? And what I'm trying to do is answer their question fully. Now, when somebody asks me a question and I kind of don't know what they're talking about, maybe I do, but kind of don't, then as a presenter, I've already learned, never answer a question you're not sure you understand. So what I often do is I then ask another question. Before I answer that question, I just want to be clear. Is this what you're asking me? And then I would restate the question. And if the person says, yes, that's exactly what I'm asking you, then I can answer it. And sometimes they'll say, no, that's not really what I'm asking. I say, can you help me out one more time? Just elaborate a little bit more on the question because I want to give you the answer that you're looking for. Now, when I do that, that also allows me time to think, really absorb the information. When I was younger, I used to think that you had to answer quickly, you know, answer quickly, but you don't have to answer quickly. You can take your time answering, but again, Part of scripting is not only knowing what to say, it's how to respond to questions. So maybe a good task for you would be to list what are the top five to 10 things that customers ask that you should be able to respond to very quickly and with confidence. When I started out as an engineer, I used to design wireless systems. And so one of the things I learned early on is to go out and get a list of all the tough questions your customers are going to ask you. And typically, we had a list somewhere between, I don't know, 30 and 40, maybe 50 sometimes, of different questions that we were going to be asked. And then we'd go through the answers with the top engineers. So when we went out and did a presentation, the engineers knew what we should be saying. So in other words, we didn't go out there and just wing it. We already had question scripts already written. When the customer asked this, you do one of two things. You answer like this or... You ask clarifying questions and then provide the answers like so. And so, again, this conversation about scripts is interesting because a lot of us don't practice scripts. You know, some of us are averse to script, don't want to use them. Some of us rely on it too much. But I think somewhere in the middle lies the balance, right? If you can just use the script, again, structuring what to say, how to say it, when to say it, and then infuse it with your personality, that makes all the difference in the world. In my past podcast, I've talked about a gentleman named Albert Morabian, and he came up with this formula for liking, whether people like you or not. And I'm sure you've seen the formula. It says 55% of whether I like you or not is based on my visual cues, you know, how you look, body language. 38% of whether I like you or not is based on your tone. To me, that was the most striking, 38% is based on tone, and only 7%, the remaining 7% is actual content. So listen to that. 38% of whether I like you or not is based on your voice, your tone. 7% is based on the actual content, which means tone is supreme, reign supreme over content. In other words, how you deliver the content matters more than the actual content. Now, I hate to believe that we're so shallow that we care more about how you sound than what you're actually saying, but... There it is. My point is that if you want to sound like you know what you're talking about, you have to practice it. And again, I'm not saying stick to a script. What I'm saying is that know what you have to say, how you should say it, more importantly, when you should say it. I know I'm repeating myself because I really want you to get that. So again, practice two types of scripts. One script is when you talk about your product or service and you're doing your presentation, that's one script. Make it sound conversational, infuse your personality in there, but nonetheless, certain things have to be said. And if you've got a great team, a great marketing team, you can probably work these things out. But also, on the flip side, practice scripts with regard to tough questions. List out all the tough questions you're going to get you know, from your customers. For example, customer asks you, let's say you're selling, I don't know, web marketing services. Well, how can you prove that your service works? That's a tough question, right? How can you quantify that your marketing tactics actually work online? How do you quantify that? You know, these are really tough questions. And to try to guess what you should say at that moment is not the moment. Never practice on your customers, practice by yourself. So again, list out tough questions And again, have those conversations. Last thing, role play. Again, sit down with somebody and have them ask you the question. And then, you know, you know, again, have them evaluate your response. Did I answer your question fully? 
Did it make sense? Did I come across sincere, genuine, earnest as an expert? Did I position myself as such? And have those conversations. I don't know why we don't role play as much. I should do a whole separate episode just on role playing because I think that's crucial, especially when it comes to making scripts sound very natural. Anyway, that's it for this Let's Talk Sales. This is Victor Antonio. Leave me some feedback below. Again, this is a new series I'm developing. Uh, as you notice, I'm, I'm not trying to, not a lot of hype here. I'm just trying to have a conversation with you because I really want to help you grow your sales. So if you have any questions, leave them below. Uh, if you have any feedback, let me hear and we will see you on the next episode. Take care.